messing with materials is one of the big parts of layer making that I really enjoy. And for this project, I'm using two completely different products that I'm a little excited about. The first is a very clever and durable layer covering made by Jigskins. This is a decorative shrink tubing that has the potential to do away with the hours of painting and waiting for clear coats that normally accompanies making layers at home. The second product is a hard plastic resin that has micro spheres already added to make it float. It's also thin enough to be poured into moulds and once cured, tough enough to be machined. For this project, I'm going to combine the two to create a classic top water layer. To begin with, I need to make some resin blanks to turn on the lathe. And to do that, first of all, I'm going to create some simple moulds from PVC conduit. I can cut this down to about 6 inches, which is a couple of inches longer than the finished layer. To keep the tubes upright, I'm going to make a base by drilling some holes in a pine board. And I'm using a force a bit of the same size. I can also tidy up the ends of the pipe in preparation by removing the burrs with a sharp knife. Then I can spray a little wax release agent through the pipes. To plug the end of the tubes, I've rolled up some modelling clay into balls and that can be pushed into the base. The tubes should then fit snugly into place. Although the resin already contains a lightweight filler, this tends to separate out as the resin is left to stand. And I'll need to gently mix it up before it can be used. I'm using a piece of plastic as a stirrer, as wood tends to contain moisture and is never a friend of this type of resin. After a minute or so of mixing and giving the sides a good scrape, the resin should have the consistency of thin batter and I can pour it out into a mixing cup. To get the volume I used a spare tube with the end capped and poured out two tubes of water into a cup. Then with a scrap block of wood and a pen I could transfer the measurement to two other cups. For the other part of the resin I followed exactly the same procedure, gently mixing until it reached the right consistency and then I could pour it into my other cup. With the two parts combined I give myself about a minute to mix them together. I don't really want to beat the mixture and add air bubbles. Just a gentle stirring action should do the trick and again making sure I scrape the sides. Then I can fill the tubes and leave them for a couple of hours to set up. With a bit of pressure and some help from the release agent, the blanks should pop out of the tube. Back on the bandsaw, I can trim both ends. And then mark some crosshairs with a knife and a jig to help find the centre. To finish off, a bridle can be used to make the centre point. Although the blanks could be taken and placed directly in the lathe for turning, I tend to leave them a day or so to cure and fully harden up. I think the lathe is one of those machines that stands a little apart. I can't say I've ever got over excited about using the chop saw, but I've happily spent evenings turning things on the lathe until the small hours. 
And for this project, rather than work from a drawing, I'm going to work from memory and follow my eye to create a very basic shape. Tools wise, I'm going to stick with the skew chisel. And the first job to do is to true up the piece. I'm also marking a collar to stop myself from running the chisel up into the drive centre and blunting it. Then I can begin to form a taper by applying gentle pressure as the chisel travels. For the head, I'm using the chisel as a scraper. This gives me a little more control as I shave the profile down. The tail also receives the same treatment. And really from here on in, I can just refine the form and play with it until I'm happy. And once I'm done, I can cut it free. Back on the bandsaw, I could also remove the other end. For hardware, I've added stainless steel screw eyes and cups to the front and rear. And a plain eye for the belly hook hanger. For the eye holes, I first marked out the positions with a bradle and then used an undersized bit with a hand driver to drill them out. Once the trebles and split rings were added, I could screw the eyes into place. For weights, I used stainless steel quarter inch bull bearings. And to fit them, I drilled two slightly smaller diameter holes near the rear of the layer, which meant the balls had hold their position after being pushed in. To finish off the shaping, I'm adding a small flat spot to the chin. And then after removing the belly hook and hanger, I can pick out a colour. I'm cutting it on the long side, as I can trim it later. To fit it to the layer body, I can open up the sleeve and slide it into place. Adding the screw eye to the belly again will hold the sleeve in position. Using a hot plate I brought a dish of water up to boiling point. And then gripping the layer with some pliers I can simply hold it under the water for a few seconds. And as if by magic I've got a freshly covered layer. To tidy up I can trim away the excess with a sharp knife and add a drop of super glue to the screw eyes. And then the job's done. 